bridges. So this is a 33 millimeter by 14 millimeter uh, dimension block. And so this allows you to create using this full same full strength formulation of the Bruxer, uh, you can do both anterior and posterior bridges, three or four units. And so you can see where at that three unit or that image on the left, you can see we can safely fit one more unit into that block. Uh, as far as delivery, you can use the same approach, conventional or adhesive cementation. And these take about 90 to 120 minutes to mill out and all using a single burr. It really is pretty incredible. Uh, so I'll show you this case here. You can see this PFM bridge the patient had from 18 to 20. Uh, this PFM bridge has seen better days. Let's take a look at from the buckle. You can see a little bit of recession around the margins. And so we take this off and I get the uh, preparations cleaned up. This was one of the, the most challenging cases I've ever had to prep. Patient was a gagger, could not open much at all. Uh, but fortunately, we were able to get this case milled out or get the preparation done and designed. And I actually want to take you through what this uh, design process looks like for a bridge. You might think it's really, really uh, challenging, more difficult than a single unit. There's obviously more to consider. You've got double the margins. You've got uh, connector areas between the abutments and the ponic. And so this is the case here. So the margin AI does does start out by establishing the margins or pre-placing the margins. And here, I actually didn't do a great job of retraction, but you can see using the color color mode, I can, and since I prepped it, I have a pretty good idea of where to position that margin line. So I'm gonna move this in a little bit on number 20. So if you see on the bottom of the screen, I actually changed, I set this case up as number 19 to 21. And it's kind of one of the tricks in the software. If I set it as the true number 18, 19 as the ponic and 20, uh, what it would do is the software would squeeze in since the restorative space for the ponic is relatively small. Uh, it would be a really small molar since it's, again, if you set it up as number 19. So what I do is I change it from 19, have the ponic be number 20. So that way I can have premolar anatomy right into that space for the ponic. And so just one of the kind of tips as far as setting the case up. So, so here me, on the, yeah. I'm go, go interrupt on. You. So basically sure. because the, a number 18 had moved forward, you call this 19, 20, 21 to... Uh, for the AI to actually create a premolar instead of a molar because you don't have a space for molar. Is that what you were saying? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Now, there's nothing wrong with setting it up as 18, 19, 20, and the AI would create a, a molar. It would put molar anatomy. It would just be really narrow, really small, dimensionally mesial distal. So um, not a huge deal, not something that our patient would really notice, but just looking at that restorative space, I thought premolar and premolar anatomy would work out a little bit better. So let's take a look at what it it will do. Uh, we're going to hit design, and the software is going to do its thing and create uh, create our design proposal. So we can see if there's a violation of any material thickness, it'll let you know. We're going to hit OK. Uh, but usually if there is a thin spot, the software prioritizes creating uh, enough material thickness for each restoration. So that shouldn't be an issue. And if there is, you can always add to the surface as needed. Uh, so here is our proposal. You can see with bridges, certainly more likely to have undercuts if that is the case. And we can always verify it. I'll show you afterwards how we can check that. Uh, but with our bridge design, you can see we have three individual designs. I just click on each one and notice how the software got the occlusion right where I like it, minus 350. Here is a little bit heavier. 
But what I see is maybe it's actually on the mesial side, it's hugging that, that mesial tooth a little bit more. So what we can do is Bob mentioned the smooth function. I'm going to hide the mandibular model. So I'm going to get rid of the uh, prep model. And you can see how there's a little bit of an extension on the buckle, that mesial buckle area. So all I have to do is I'm going to go and find that smooth, smooth tool and just smooth out that little extension. And what that does is just make a nicer contour on that mesial surface. So just a minimal change. Now we're no longer really hugging that uh, mesial neighbor. And if for any reason, like I'm smoothing this contact area here, let's say you wanted this contact area to be a little bit heavier. Let's just see where our posing model is. So I can see we essentially want to have contact on that cusp tip on mandibular posterior teeth. So let's just bring that up and just get it into a better position. So there are little things that you can do. So here it's already within contact. Here on the molar, we're pretty much there as well. Uh, but there's little things that you can do to modify the design if you can make a little improvement or you see an improvement that can be made to uh, the functional areas or of course the aesthetic areas as well. So it's pointing out there's a couple of undercuts on the design. So on the left-hand side here, the third button down, and you'll see when I hover over any of these icons, it does pop up with the label of what that tool is. So you can see this, this ruler is measure. Uh, the one second from the top is contact. And three down, this is margin. So let's go to margin. And inside of the margin section, there's this uh, section, or next to margin, there's a button called milling and insertion direction. And this is where it points out where those undercuts are. And undercuts are not a huge problem as long as they're not really on the margin. So you can see it, it highlights the undercut based on the path of insertion. With a bridge, you want both abutment teeth to have the same path of insertion. You'll see that when I move this arrow here, they're linked together. And so you have the option maybe to move this arrow to see if you can eliminate the undercut. And so just moving that slightly to the buckle did actually cut down on those undercut labels. And you can see there's still a little bit of red, but I usually, as long as I don't see an undercut at the margin from this one bird's eye view, the, the insertion direction, as long as I can visualize both margins, I'm ready to go. All right, so I'm gonna close out of the insertion direction and that's our bridge design. Uh, what do you think, Bob? Pretty easy. Pretty straightforward, right? There's really not a whole lot of uh, uh, designing going on. And you can see the software, when I click on, let's say the pawn, you can see how there's numbers here for how heavy the, the contact is or the connector area is. Uh, this number 43 BC, the BC stands for bridge contact. And it's ac actually a calculation of the height of that connector by the buckle to lingual width. So it's height of the connector squared by the buckle to lingual width. Essentially what we're shooting for is a connector size of three by three millimeters. If it's a little shorter than three uh, from gingival to occlusal, that's usually a violation of what we would want. Uh, but the software calculates all of that for you. So if it was in violation, just to show you if we were in violation, I'm gonna move this surface in. Notice how it turns that area red. So That's it's really intuitive. It gives you real clear visuals on when it's safe, when you have a good contact, when it's violating, whether it's thickness or too small of a connector. Uh, Justin, um, one of the things that I, you know, I don't do many bridges these days, but one sure. of the um, things that I used to do with bridges was try to make them hygienic. And that was a, a, an easy task with uh, PFM. Um, yep. with, with zirconia, I hear that um, th these uh, pontics need to rest on the tissue um, uh, for, for support. Is that what uh, Glidewell also recommends? Uh, can we make this into a hygienic pontic so people can clean it better? I'm glad you asked that. You absolutely can. So as far as pontic design, you have the freedom to make this. What the software typically will default to is a modified ridge lap or slight ridge lap. So that's kind of what we have going on here. Uh, but if you want it hygienic, 
notice how when I click on the tooth itself, this is an introduction to another tool. This is move, rotate, scale here on the left with the arrows. Notice uh -huh. how there's arrows around the design. And so now at this gingival region, I can just expand this upwards and you can lift the whole gingival portion above the tissue. And if you want it to really just flatten it out, you can design it however you want. So let's just say we hide the model. And if you want it to maybe shape the center of the ponnet, you certainly can. Or raise just the buckle a little bit more. You have absolute freedom uh, to do that as well. With this high strength formulation of Bruxer, the Bruxer Now, uh, the three Y zirconia, um, you don't really need to have that gingival support. So it won't break. No, this is very strong. And so one of the things that we do to avoid and, and ensure that high toughness at the connector area is this connector calculation. So as long as we hit the 27, it's the product of that formula I mentioned, the height of the connector by the buckle to lingual width. As long as we're in that green zone, there's plenty of thickness, mainly from uh, cervical to occlusal. Zirconia is much stronger, and probably most materials, but zirconia especially, it's much stronger when you can have uh, a taller connector along those areas. Yeah, so if it's in the posterior, you can just make it even a little bit bigger than that 27. For and, sure. And leave it off the, the gum so the patient can kind of clean it properly. Excellent. Absolutely. So I know you don't do a lot of bridges, and, and I don't either. We're mostly we're in that world of implants. But uh, right. if a patient has a pre-existing bridge like this case here and opted against an implant, bridge options or the bridge option is here available with the system. So. Right.